Hello my beautiful viewers, Pocketcraft back again to dish out another video. But before we get to that, I'd just like to address that this channel now has over 500 subscribers. Holy shit, I did not think I would get this far at all. I'd just like to take this uh, opportunity to thank every single one of you. You really don't know how much this means to me. Unfortunately, I don't have anything special planned for this 500 subscriber event, but when I get to 1,000 subscribers, if I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll probably do a giveaway or something. We'll just have to see. Anyway, as you can tell from the title, this video will focus on my top 10 favourite gym leaders of all time. I will admit, this video was a toughie. I already knew what my top 3 were, but I really had to think about the remaining 7. Anyways, I think I've rambled on for long enough, so without further ado, let's do this! Kicking things off at number 10 is Pokemon Emerald's 8th gym leader, Juan. Why Juan you ask? Simple, because his name is Juan. Oh yeah, and he also apparently mentored Wallace. Number 9 is Chuck. Chuck is awesome, and he uses fighting type Pokemon, which is actually my favourite type of all time. He's also good friends with Faulkner's dad, Walker. Not only that, in the Pokemon anime, the gym leader Brawly, he'd now admitted to being one of Chuck's many students. And speaking of Chuck's students, in the Pokemon Adventures manga, he trained Blue in both martial arts and training Pokemon. And I think we can all admit that Blue was a pretty epic gym leader by himself. So all in all, Chuck is actually a well-renowned badass in the Pokemon world, and one hell of a trainer. The battle between him and Blue in the manga is pretty damn intense. So if you've read the manga, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't read it, go read it. Taking that number 8 spot is none other than Lavridge Town's Flannery. The reason Flannery is on this list is because she's hot. So hot, in fact, that she can handle touching Slugma, despite the Pokemon being made of molten lava. Not only this, but her grandpa was set to be a former member of Horn's Elite Four, and in the anime, he uses a Typhlosion, which is in fact my favourite Pokemon. This makes him instantly a badass in my eyes. Here we are at number 7, with Lieutenant Surge. Everyone loves Surge, and I usually see him in other people's top 10 lists as well. This guy was a commandant officer who fought in a war, and was even said to have saved the life of one of the members of his gym. In the anime, the battle between this guy and Ash is definitely one of the most memorable in my opinion, and probably always will be. Speaking of the anime, there was a scene that showed Lieutenant Surge being over 8 foot tall. This was most likely unintentional, but that didn't stop the fans from spouting theories such as Surge losing his legs in the war and then being replaced by prosthetics. But you gotta admit this guy is one of the most badass gym leaders ever. Number 6 is Blue. This guy has been both rival and Pokemon champion, but eventually settles down as the gym leader of Viridian City in the Generation 2 games. Blue is the only leader who doesn't stick to a specific type theme. This is most likely because he uses the Pokemon he gathered throughout his journey as Red's rival, with the exception of the starter. Blue was also the grandson of the legendary Professor Oak, who needs no explanation on his awesomeness. Rocking that number 5 spot is Koga. Koga is a ninja, which makes him instantly cool. Plus, he was the first of the gym leaders to get promoted to the rank of Elite 4. Not only that, Koga has studied medicine and antidotes, and he even makes his own potions to heal his Pokemon. He also serves as a teacher with many students coming to him to be trained in the art of ninjutsu and Pokemon. What's more, one of his students is his own daughter, Janine, who takes over Koga's gym when he becomes one of the Elite Four. I think that's more than enough information for Koga to gain a spot on my top 10 list. Alright, here we are at number 4. Number 4 is my favourite female gym leader of all time, Jasmine. I've always liked Jasmine, ever since I was a kid. 
in more ways than one as well, if you know what I mean. But in all seriousness, Jasmine is a kind-hearted trainer who would even abandon her gym just to nurse a sick Ampharos. Not only that, she uses a Steelix, which in my opinion is one of the most badass looking Pokemon in existence. An interesting fact about Jasmine is that according to a gentleman in the Olivine Lighthouse, Jasmine used to train rock types before the newly discovered steel type had surfaced. Oh yeah, and she also gives you waterfall in the Gen 4 games. Finally, we're into the top 3. As I said at the beginning of the video, I already knew my top 3, so these guys remain solid. Anyway, at number 3, we have Viridian City Gym Leader and Team Rocket Boss, Giovanni. In every form of Pokemon media that includes Giovanni, whether it be the games, anime or manga, he's always been a badass with very small changes to his personality, unlike a lot of characters. I particularly like him in the Pokemon Origins special. The first time he battles Red, he wipes the floor with his Charizard, and the second battle is absolutely amazing. And even though he loses, he's still able to take on most of Red's six Pokemon team, despite only using two himself. I can honestly go on about this guy all day, but I won't, so let's move on. Alrighty, at number two, we've got the runner-up, Blaine. You know, I never thought too much of this guy in the anime series. Not too much in the games either. But in the Pokemon Adventures manga, Blaine is awesome. If you plan to read the manga, then I'd advise you click the button on the screen now to skip this part, because this will probably be a spoiler. 5 second warning. Okay, in the manga, Blaine was the lead scientist in the creation of Mewtwo, and he actually ended up merging his own human DNA with that of Mew's in order to create it. Not only that, during the process in which Blaine transfers his DNA over to Mewtwo, he accidentally receives some of Mewtwo's DNA, which actually allows Blaine to control Mewtwo throughout a good part of the manga series. Yes, here we are, at number one. Taking the top spot is none other than my boy Brock. Now Brock may not be the most badass guy in town, but he possesses a strange ability, allowing him to see despite not having his eyes open. In fact, strange abilities seem to run in the Brock family, as his mother, who supposedly passed away, appeared in an episode of Pokemon Chronicles. Brock has given us a lot of laughs over the years, He's gave us quotes that some of us even choose to live by, such as the drying pan dilemma. Oh no, it's raining! Oh. Hey, I know! I'll use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan! And let's not forget the jelly filled donut scene. These donuts are great! Jelly filled are my favorite! Nothing beats a jelly filled donut! Brock is just a lovable character who enjoys breeding with Pokemon, and I think many of us fans can relate to that. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry if my voice sounded a little bit dodgy in this video, I actually had a cold while recording it. Anyway, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will be bringing out more content in the future. Like I said before, thanks for the one th thanks for the 500 subscribers. I really do appreciate it. Um, stay subscribed if you haven't already subscribed and yet enjoyed the video. Then be sure to subscribe. If you have any ideas for future videos, be sure to let me know. Drop a comment or hit me up with a personal message. Either way is fine. Anyway, I hope you all have a fucking awesome day, and I will see you next time.